will lead us by the wisdom of God. And yesterday we said the Spirit will lead us by the Word of God. And the Word of God is the foundation for the operations of the Spirit. God's Word is the foundation for the operations of the Spirit. Every manifestation of the Spirit must be consistent with the revelation of the finished work of Jesus. Any manifestation that is in opposition to the revelation of the finished work of Jesus has no relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus is here to glorify Jesus. Sorry, the Holy Spirit is here to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here to magnify the ministry of Jesus in the hearts of men and women. So any manifestation or demonstration of the Spirit or the expression of the Spirit that does not agree with the Word of God should not be received. Should not be received. And a, a lot of people, because of their lack of knowledge of the Word, the thing that every manifestation is from God, especially when people say in the name of Jesus, someone could say in the name of Jesus, but the operation is in witchcraft. The operation is in witchcraft. You can say in the name of Jesus. Just that someone says in the name of Jesus shouldn't make you look like, okay, yes, the name of Jesus is called. The name of Jesus can be called at the wrong altar. False prophets don't use any other name. They use the name of Jesus. They don't use any other name. They use the name of Jesus. And that is why you need to train yourself in the word of God to judge manifestations, visitations, encounters. Every spiritual experience has to be judged in the light of God's word. So today we're saying that the spirit will lead you by the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is based on God's word. There is the wisdom of this world, but there is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is pure. One of the things you use in knowing that something is of God is that it is pure. The wisdom from above is pure. If it is from God, it is pure. If it is not from God, something has contaminated it. Something has impacted it negatively, and we shouldn't take that. The wisdom of God is pure. And the wisdom of God does not exalt the flesh. The wisdom of God doesn't exalt the flesh. If, if a person is truly walking in wisdom, the things they do will be consistent with the will of God. The wisdom of God is pure. And because the wisdom of God is pure, there is a need for us to allow his word to decide what we believe, what we do, and how we function. I have to allow God's word to decide what I do and how I function. If the wisdom of God is pure, it means the Spirit of God will always lead me into things that maintains the integrity of the purity of the Spirit. 
he will not lead me into something that is not in line with the principle of purity. He will lead me into something that is in line with the principle of purity. He's not going to lead you into something that you look at it and say, but this is not what it should be. No, purity is at the heart of the spirit in every leading, in every revealing, in every manifestation, in every demonstration, purity is important. And that is why the wisdom from above is pure. The wisdom from above is pure. Why is it pure? Because it is an expression of the nature of God. The wisdom from above is pure. It's, it's not cunning. It's not manipulative. It's not said, it, it doesn't entice. It does not seduce. The wisdom from above is pure. And the wisdom of God will lead you in the ways of God. The wisdom of God will lead you in the ways of God. It will lead you in the ways of peace. It will lead you in the ways of victory. Why? Because it is the wisdom of God. And there are so many people that want to see manifestations of the Spirit uh, but they go about it in the flesh. Maybe someone heard someone said, he fasted for 40 days and then he got the anointing. That's what the person said. Another person came and said, he fasted for 50 years, then he got the anointing. Okay. Another person came and said, he fasted for 100 days and they got the anointing. Okay. Another person came and said, he fasted for one year and they got the anointing. But do we really get the anointing by fasting? That becomes another question. Do we receive the anointing by fasting? Do we receive the anointing by fasting? If we receive the anointing by fasting, are there scriptures that agree with that? The wisdom of God will lead you into understanding. It will amaze you. I'm about to say something that most people may need to read the word of God to know that it's true. We don't receive anointing by fasting. Christ in you the anointed one and his anointing. Christ in you. If you. The scripture said Christ in you, the hope of glory. The reason for the fasting is to subject the body, the flesh, as I can be more sensitive to what is already in me in Christ Jesus. So you see someone fasting to get the anointing. Maybe the man fasted, and while he fasted, things started happening. Manifestation, his boldness increased, his sensitivity towards God increased, but it was not about fasting that brought the anointing. The purpose of the fast is to increase your sensitivity towards God, towards his word, towards his spirit, and towards his ways of doing things. So when I fast and pray, my level of sensitivity towards God begins to increase, and I'll be quick to receive, when I say receive, like instruction, uh, thoughts from the spirit of God, insight, I'm just quick to receive. But if a person is not in the place of prayer and fasting and maybe seeking God, living a lifestyle of consecration, even when God is speaking, sometimes they are dull. They, that there is they are dull, uh, dull towards the things of the spirit, so they cannot quickly receive it. 
But, but God is saying something. And that doesn't mean that the anointing is not in them. Because Christ in them is the source of all the anointing they need. All the anointing you need for your ministry and for your life is in you. This may sound differently, but that is what it is. All the anointing you need for ministry, you need for your life is in you. But how do you come into manifestation, demonstration, release of the spirit, encounters, things start happening? How do you get to that point? It is when you begin to submit yourself to God through his word, through praying in tongue, waiting upon him, listening to the Holy Spirit, walking in obedience, that's when things begin to happen. Because at this point, you can hear God and do what he's asking you to do, and then you get the results. The anointing you need is in you right now. How is that anointing there? Christ is in you. If you're born again, he says, if any man being Christ is in you, creature, if you're born again, Christ is in you. And all the anointing you need is in Christ Jesus. It's not outside Christ. And that Christ has come to dwell in you. If you're born again, you have Christ inside of you. That is a proof that you have the anointing inside of you. And if you become more conscious to the word of God, start studying the word of God, start acting on the word of God, start living by faith, start believing his word and start obeying God, then you're going to see manifestation. You are going to see manifestations. The manifestations you will see will amaze you. All the anointing you need is right inside of you. All the anointing you need. Christ in you. Christ in you. When I fast, I'm just trying to put my body on that subjection. That's one of the reasons why I fast. When I fast, I'm trying to improve my sensitivity towards God. When I fast, I'm trying to put myself in the spiritual mood where I can easily respond to some flow. When I fast, I'm just putting myself in a, say, in a situation where it is easy for me to make the connection because sometimes to make certain connection, the flesh needs to be down. So in the course of me fasting and praying, my flesh is no more active like it should be active. Now my spirit man begins to reign because your flesh can reign or your spirit man can reign. So when my spirit man begins to reign, what I mean by that is that my spirit man is in charge because I keep feeding it with the word. I keep empowering it through prayer. And now I'm quick to receive from the Holy Spirit. And I become quick to receive from the Holy Spirit. My spirit and the Holy Ghost is in partnership. And because they're in partnership, the one that begins to happen, the miracles. Why? At this point, my flesh can't, when God said, pray for that woman that is crippled, she'll be healed right now. But because I've worked on my spirit, man, because I've been feeding on the world, because I've been spending some time, I'm not sensitive, I'm bold towards that. But if I'm not sensitive towards that, if God said, pray for her, that will come. Unbelief will come. I will shrink back. I will go back. That's the difference. That's the difference. The difference for God to use you mightily or for you not to be used mightily, it depends on you. It does not depend on God. How God will use you does not depend on God. It depends on you. It's like you went to a sea, a river, to, to fetch, to get water, you know. You went to a sea or to a river, and you went with a bucket. You're just going to get a bucket of water. If you go with 10 buckets, you will get 10 buckets of water. If you go with 100 buckets, you will get 100 buckets of water. Whatever containers you have will determine the water that will be available to you. And that is how it is. So when we say, he that comes to God must believe. So to the degree you believe and act on what you believe will determine the manifestations, the demonstration, the expression of the spirits that will be available to you. Where we have the problem is that we're looking for the anointing. We're trying to go get the anointing. I want to go get the anointing. I'm going to get the anointing. You can never get what you already have. You can never get what you already have. You can never get what you already have. And let me say this to you. The more you learn to practice the presence of God, your boldness will increase to manifest the power of God that is already inside of you. 
The more you learn to practice the presence of God, the more you learn to practice his presence by listening to the word, by living a life of worship, by living a life of consecration, the more you practice that, the more bold you will be to minister and release the power of God. I can feel it right now. Yes, the more you do that. So you see people looking for anointing. I'm looking for the anointing. I'm look, and the Bible said, Christ in you. Oh, oh, and many people fasted and prayed because they have no knowledge. Your fasting and prayer will work better when you have knowledge. Your fasting and your praying will work better when you have knowledge. If you don't have revelation knowledge, your prayers will not make much impact because it takes knowledge to know that your prayers are answered. It takes knowledge to know that your prayer has been answered. So if you're ignorant of what the word of God teach, you'll be praying, but no expectation, no manifestation. I, I keep praying, I keep praying, I keep praying, I keep praying, but you have no knowledge because by knowledge, you will know that when you pray, God answered you. So you need to act in faith and expect miracles to start happening. You need to act in faith and expect miracles to start happening. But if there is no knowledge, you are just praying. If there is no knowledge, you're just praying. Because what knowledge does, it puts you in a position where you receive. When you pray, believe that you have them. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, when you pray, Mark 11. If you read Mark 11 from verse 20 to 24, part of it that said, when you pray, believe that you have them. When you pray, believe that you have them. But many who pray, you don't believe they have them. So they keep praying the same thing. You don't believe they have them. There are prayer points you're not supposed to be praying anymore. But because we don't believe we we'll have them, we'll keep repeating the same thing all the time. Mark 11 said, when you pray, believe that you have them. So what are you supposed to do? You step into thanksgiving. After you have finished praying that prayer, say, God, I'm asking you for this. Believe that you have them. Then you start thanking God for it. You start thanking God for it. But most times you go back to repeat the same prayer. There are prayers to repeat, but there are prayers not to repeat. One of the prayers you need to repeat may be that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him. You can pray that often because you need more wisdom, more knowledge to, to tap into the, the resources of heaven that is already inside of you. The more you pray that, the more understanding comes, the more insight comes, the more revelation comes. But when you pray to God something like, God, I receive the finances to pay off this mortgage or pay off this house. When you pray that prayer, it's enough. That's one time you pray, you start thanking God. Lord, I thank you for the manifestation. Lord, I thank you because I have the house. Lord, I thank you. You move from praying to thanksgiving prayer. You are now thanking God. You are now thanking God, giving him praise for it. So it takes knowledge to have manifestation. It takes revelation knowledge to have manifestation. So God will lead you by wisdom. By wisdom, you know the will of God for every season. By wisdom, you understand the, the, the purposes of God. You understand the will of God by wisdom. It is by wisdom that you know that you are in the direction of the will of God. So, but if you don't have revelation knowledge, it will be difficult for you to establish things in the spirit. It will be difficult to have revelation knowledge. Because ignorance is the major weapon of Satan. One of the greatest weapons of Satan is not adoption, fornication, it's ignorance. It's ignorance because when you're ignorant, if you're ignorant, you'll be beaten. The area where your ignorance is the area where the finished work of Jesus will not be in full manifestation. Hmm. I said the area where your ignorance of God's word is the area where the finished work of Jesus will not be in full manifestation. The area where your ignorance of God's word is the area where the finished work of Jesus will not be in full manifestation in your life. If, if, if you want the finished work of Jesus to be a manifestation in healing, you need to have knowledge in the area of healing. God, the knowledge in the area of healing will bring faith to keep the healing and to receive healing. 
If it's your finances, if you have the revelation of the finished work of Jesus concerning supernatural provision and finances, your faith will be released in that area to receive and to retain. So the area where you have revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus is the area where you will retain victory, and that is the area where you're going to gain ground. You will never gain ground in an area where you have no revelation. Your defeats are always in an area where you have no revelation. This is too good. Woo! Your defeats, our defeats are always in the area where we have no revelation knowledge because without the revelation knowledge, faith will come. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the area where we have revelation knowledge of the word of God is the area where we'll gain ground, is the area where we'll, we'll take over, is the area where we're going to reign. But the area where we don't have the revelation knowledge is the area where the enemy will be superior. That is how these things work. That is just what's oh, what is going on in this area of my life. That area of your life, you have no revelation in that area. So if you want that area to get better, you need to have revelation. Psalm 71 verse 21 said, that shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. The psalmist knew that there has to be all one comfort. For this all one comfort to be a reality, I need all one revelation. Proverbs 4, 18, said, the path of the just is a shining light. It shineth more and more unto a perfect day. The path of the just is a shining light. It shines more and more and more and more unto a perfect day. The path of the just, it shines more and more and more unto a perfect day. So the more I have revelation, the more brighter that area of my life will be. And these are strategic keys for, for ministry, for what God has called us to do. So the area where I don't have revelation is the area where I can use my authority because I don't know what to do there. I don't know what to do there. So the anointing is in you. Christ in you, the headquarter of every anointing. Christ in you, the source of all anointing. Healing anointing, prosperity anointing, whatever anointing. Christ in you, the source of all anointing. I want to say that again. Christ in you, the source of all anointings. Christ in you, the source of all anointings. Don't forget this. Christ in you, the source of all anointings. All, all, all anointing. Christ in you, the source of all anointings. All the anointings you're looking for, the source is in you. And the more you have revelation of the indwelling Christ will determine the expression, manifestation, and the demonstration of the spirit that will be happening around you. Christ in you, the source of all anointings. Christ in you, the source of all anointings. It is that Christ in you. So, but always the enemy wants to take our eyes off Christ and put our eyes somewhere. So we don't see Christ as the source of the anointing. We think that we, after we have received Christ, we need to go to somewhere else to get the anointing. Unknown to us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. All the glory of God is hidden in Christ Jesus. All the glory of God is in Christ. There is no more glory outside Christ. All the glory of God, anything that has to do with glory, is in Christ Jesus. All the glory is in Christ. And if you don't have the revelation that all the glory is in Christ, you'll be looking for the glory somewhere else. And that is why people get into all kinds of witchcraft, you know, all kinds of deception. Why? Because they are no longer looking at Christ. They are looking at experience. Oh, look at Paranda Shakatua. Hey, thank you, Jesus. They are no more looking at Christ. They are looking at the experience. Oh, this man of God had this experience. Oh, this woman of God had this experience. Every experience must be judged in the light of the living Christ that dwells in us, his word and his spirit. We can never exalt experience above the word of God. It doesn't matter who had the experience or whatever experience they have. No, every experience must be judged in the light 
of the finished work of Jesus. Makuri kandere bo santoro bo sakara baba. Repo sakara ba seketo libla kanda baba. Le ponto bo sakanda ribo sakaba baba. Rimbro satoro bo sakanda brato sekata baba. Rimbro sekata libro to kata libra kata baba. Rambro seketo libla kanda baba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Makuri kata brato sekapa brante sakaba baba. Rendo sakanda rambo sakanda riko to mayanka. Lembro sekanda riko to mahali kata pasakta. Yes, Lord. Ma kito ma ngingra to sakanda libro sakamba laba. Lenkuma alengra to sakamba laba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. This, uh, thank you, Jesus. Ooh, your peace have started, says the Lord. Your peace, your journey to peace have started. Because truth will free you from condemnation. Truth will free you from anxiety. And truth will free you from frustration. Hey, come in and I'm Kababa. Thank you, Father. Truth will free you from anxiety. Truth will free you from frustration and truth will free you from depression and truth will free you from uh, expectations that have no roots in God's word, manifestations that does not line up with the knowledge of his will, feelings that are not in the direction of his purpose. Why? Because you have the truth of God's word. And this is what makes a difference. Sometimes somebody can say, oh, this man of God does not really struggle. He just has the flow. Yes, because he has come to seek Christ as the source of all the anointings. That's the difference. This other person has not seen Christ as the source of all the anointing he needs for life and ministry. So he has to begin to start a journey from here to there, from here to there, from there to there, from here to there. I've seen people come back and tell me, Apostle, oh, I went to the mountain, I fasted, I prayed, and I came back. They came back more confused. They came back more confused. They came back losing their mind. They came back with all kinds of dirty experience. But that is not the will of God. By strength shall no man prevail. When God gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. When God gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us the key to unlocking everything. Hmm. 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 I like that. When God gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. He gave us everything. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us the key to unlocking everything. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost, Marie Canaba. When God gave us Jesus, He gave us everything. When He gave us the Holy Spirit, He gave us the key to unlocking everything. We have everything, we have the key to unlocking everything. When God gave us Jesus, He gave us everything. Don't forget this statement. I want you to get it, I want you to write it down, I want you to print it in your heart. When God gave us Jesus Christ, He gave us everything. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us the key to unlock everything. The key and everything is in place. And the more we spend time with his word, we become sensitive to navigate, to unlock, to receive. Oh, my father. Somebody pray in tongues, let it settle inside of your spirit. Pray in tongues. There are things you need to know. When God gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. When he gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us a key to unlock everything. Hmm. This is an impartation going on in our spirit right now. Somebody praying tongues. Ma kodo bo sakababa. Mm-mm. Limbro to kodo bo sakandara bagada. Rendo do 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 bo sakondo ni bagada. Ma ba 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 kada bagada. Rambro do kodo do bro kodo bo sakondo do bro kodo. Mondo bo sakondo do bro kodo bo sakondo do bro kodo bro. 
Thank you, Father. <laughs> By revelation, you enforce the kingdom on situations and you move in the direction of the will of God. By revelation, you enforce the kingdom. One of the ways we impose the kingdom of God on situations is by revelation knowledge. We uh, impose the kingdom on situation, on circumstances, is when we have revelation. The, the revelation we have will determine how we impose the kingdom. And that is why prayer is important. When you begin to pray in the spirit, that revelation, when it comes, you can act on it. You know, sometimes it, the revelation comes, but the boldness to act on it is not there. The boldness, the boldness is generated from the place of prayer and revelation. Yes the boldness to act on revelation on what God has spoken will come from the place of prayer and revelation, the boldness, the boldness to step out and speak the word of God and declare the word of God and declare the will of God. That boldness comes from a place of prayer. That is why we pray in tongues. That's why we pray in tongues. We pray in tongues to unlock treasures. We pray in tongues to see, to hear, to receive, to unlock supernatural codes. As we pray in the spirit, that's why praying in tongues is not a waste of time, it's an investment, it's gaining time. You gain time by praying in the spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Ranto Sakanda Baba. Oh, Rando Sakanda Baba. Le Kondo Libo Sakanda Ribra Kanda Baba. Oh, Sanda Baba. Limo Sokodo Libra Gada Baba. Rambro Sekato Libra Kanda Baba. Hey, hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Spirit has been talking to me about something, about some of you here. Most of you here, the hand of God is greatly upon you. But sometimes you look at your humanity. And you say, I don't have what it takes to do this. No, we don't do this by ourselves. We'll do this by the help of the Holy Ghost. We don't do this by ourselves. We'll do this by the help of the Holy Ghost. It is by the help of the Holy Ghost we are able to do this. It is by the help of, that's why I said the Spirit will lead you by the wisdom of God. You see, when you have the wisdom of God, it helps you to reduce stress, pressure. You know, there are certain things that you're supposed to be struggling with, but because you have the wisdom of God, you are able to handle it. The wisdom of God teaches you this is what to do. This is how to do it. And, and when you have the revelation of the wisdom of God, you, you communicate. When you have the revelation of the wisdom of God, you communicate the will of God. One of the ways you communicate Kick the will of God is when you have the revelation of the Spirit, you know. So when we pray in tongues, there are things you are making available for them to come into manifestations of the natural. Uh, now, the, we said that the Spirit will lead you by the wisdom of God. And that's the key thing in this class today, that the Spirit will lead you by the wisdom of God. And the Word of God is the wisdom of God. The Spirit will lead you by the wisdom of God. The Word of God is the wisdom of God. Now, look at this scripture in James 3. I want to read verse 15. It says, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where there is envy and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. The wisdom that is from above is first pure. You know, the, the beauty of the wisdom of God is that it does not uh, manipulate. It does not create confusion. And it does not take advantage of people. The wisdom of God bring you to a win-win situation in everything. The wisdom of God, they bring you to a situation where everybody's winning. But the wisdom that is not of this, of God, is that one person keep winning by taking advantage and the other person is not winning. But the wisdom of God makes everybody to win. And he says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. This is the, the characteristics of the wisdom of God. Number one, it is pure. It is peaceable. 
It is pure. It is peaceable. Uh, it is pure, gentle. The wisdom of God is gentle. Oh, my God. Have you seen ministers who force people to do something for them, who force them, and then if they don't agree to do it, they threaten them with a curse. Ooh, that's not, that's not God. That's witchcraft. When people threaten a person with a curse, that is the manifestation of witchcraft exhibited. You ask someone to give you money, and he said, I don't have money, or I can't give you money right now. And then he said, I'm going to cost you, begin to trust him. That's not of God. That is not of God. That is not the spirit of God. Another spirit is at work. You see, the wisdom of God would teach you peace. Would teach you peace, gentle, and it's easy to be entreated. The wisdom of God is gentle. You don't call people and begin to threaten them. And say, oh, you're leaving this ministry. I curse you. It will not be better for you. You don't need that. Those that are for you will be for you. The truth be told, there are people that need to leave you for you to make progress. There are people that their absence will be the progress of your ministry and your life. There are people by being around you, they are hindering you from making progress. Why? Because they continue to badmouth the ministry, badmouth the vision, gossip here and there. People like that, you need some excuse. You need to, they need to go. Go to somewhere they can be free. Those that are for you will come for you. You don't need to compete with this minister or with this church or with this ministry. You don't need to compare yourself with people. Comparing yourself with people does not put in a position of advantage. It puts in a position of foolishness. Comparing yourself with people puts you in a position of foolishness, not advantage. You don't compare yourself because you're called differently. You are anointed differently. You are sent to do something different. My major assignment in the ministry is to teach people how to live by faith. That's my calling. I teach many things, but God has called me to teach people how to live by faith. It's a major assignment for me to bring people into the faith life where they can trust God where they can believe God, where they can act on the word of God. That's my assignment. So I don't care what this guy is doing, that guy is doing. That's not my focus. My focus is what God has me to do. True success is putting your focus in the right direction. True success is putting your focus in the right direction. True success is putting your focus in the right direction. True success. So, so here we read this scripture said, but the wisdom that is from above is, first, is pure, and then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Without being a hypocrisy, you know, it's, it's not hypocrisy. It's not you trying to be a hypocrite. No, no partiality here. And from there, as he said, but the wisdom from above is first all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others, willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and it is always sincere. Can I say this to you this morning? Being led by the wisdom of God make you win in life. The wisdom of God does not forcefully receive, collect things from people, abuse them. Oh, you know, I'm your spiritual head. What if I tell you must do that? No, that's not how the wisdom of God works. Our job is to teach God's word and allow the Holy Spirit to want the word in them. Our job is not to force them to do the word of God. Our job is not to force them or begin to talk, you know, he speaks in a manner that is not, we're not supposed to speak. No, that's not our job. Our job is to teach the word of God in love, in the spirit of faith. And the people of God and the Holy Ghost in them will help them recognize the truth between the lines and they can run with it. Can I say this to you? When the wisdom of God leads you, it will always lead you into the will of God and into the beauty of the things of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I can take for this class this morning. We'll be back again tomorrow. I'd like you to invite someone 
we continue our teaching on how to be led by the Spirit. I believe that before this section, uh, this class on how to be led by the Spirit will be over. Many things will come to your mind about ministry, and the Spirit of God will show you things to do as you can do it in a such a way it will produce excellence and great results. Hallelujah. So um, we're looking forward to being here tomorrow. And also, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this master class about ministry. You know, partnership is important, you know, uh, and your partnership will keep helping me to keep doing more. Can you get that? So uh, I encourage you to consider partnering. Whatever the Spirit of God will lead in your heart today, to so partner with this master class. We want to encourage you to partner today. Whatever the Spirit of God will put in your heart, to partner today, wanting to partner. You know, sometimes we receive, it is also beautiful for me to be a blessing. And through partnership, I continue to come here, you know, every day, get the, 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 the right data to come here to just teach the word of God for free. And it's people that make that happen, partners, you know. When you partner with the ministry, you are saying, Apostle, continue to teach people for free. That's what you're saying. So I want to encourage you today to look at it in your heart today and say, what can I give? What can we sow to support this masterclass? And when you are sowing the seed, you just put on it for masterclass. You get what I'm saying? Whatever you're sowing, you just say for to support the masterclass. I want to encourage you today to be a blessing. Father, I pray for everyone today that you, you touch their finances, you increase them, you, you prosper them, in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, freely we have received, uh, freely we give, and that is what we do. And I pray for everyone as they partner with the master class today, that let the spirit of increase and multiplication overtake them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. You can do that. You can do your partnership by going to finishworldtv.com and slash giving, finishworktv.com and slash giving, or you can go to PayPal, it's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. On PayPal, it's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. And also want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's faithmanteaching on YouTube. And also you can get our books by going to amazon.com. There is greatness in you. And for the things you need to know about your future, it's available on Amazon.com. Thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. We'll be back again tomorrow to continue how to be led by the Spirit. There is so much that is coming. I believe at the end of this 120 days, somebody has a, a library of videos about ministry that you can always resort to, you can always use to move things so well. Thank you for your partnership. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you and have a blissful experience. Let's see you tomorrow morning. Don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon.